Hey everyone, we are live. So I want to start before we start out, I want everyone to like this video, share the video, throw it on your comments. Okay. We'll bring you in, into, into the conversation. Um, so today I'm going to be, uh, we're, we're talking to Rhonda Reyna. She's a DV advocate and survivor. And she's currently working, uh, she's currently dealing with her court kidnapped daughter. And uh, she also has an Instagram and uh, an Instagram, Instagram profile called Forensic Mom. Uh, we also have, I want, I want to go to the description of this video and, and we can, you can find out any information on upcoming, upcoming rally we have. Um, hey, Rhonda, do you want to tell us about, about what, what's going on with your case? Hi, thank you, Michelle, for having me on your live stream. I really appreciate having this opportunity to talk to your audience and share with them my journey of what I've been through, which I'm sure mirrors what so many people in California and across the nation have experienced and my journey to solutions that I'm hoping we're all getting closer to. So I have a court kidnapped daughter. I haven't seen my now 16 year old for almost four years. She was violently kidnapped when she was 13 years old after we had reported multiple incidences of domestic violence by her dad, uh, reported this to the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department, the San Mateo County District Attorney's Office, the San Mateo County Domestic Violence Agency, domestic violence agencies in Santa Cruz, the Santa Cruz Police Department, as well as Women SV in Palo Alto that is now notorious for having sold out their domestic violence victims. Um, my case is uh, not unique. However, I did get a video of my daughter's violent kidnapping that has been posted all over the internet. And that is something that has been useful to highlight this problem that's happening as an, as an endemic across the nation. So um, as heartbroken as I am, um, and many times I feel like uh, crying and giving up and not wanting to be on this planet and laying in bed remorseful, um, at the same time, I feel very motivated and inspired by God that he put me here because I am a forensic scientist by trade and that's why I use the handle Forensic Mama, and that's spelled M-O-M-M-A. -M -M you can find me on YouTube and Instagram. And I've posted a lot of my videos of the presentation. I, I you know, I, I hate to interrupt. I'm sorry. I wasn't. Can, can you tell me how I can find the video on, on YouTube now so I can share it? Yes, it's under Forensic Mama. Okay, so I'm on YouTube now. Okay. And then I have uh, which one I put in Forensic Mama. Um, which um, one should I put in? Um, it's M O M M A. Sometimes it comes up right away for me. Sometimes I have to open one of my videos and share a link. So um, you can type in law enforcement's response to domestic violence, and that should bring up the video. Are you okay. finding? Or I you apologize that I'm not more prepared for this video, but let, let's talk about it. I'll try to find it by the end of the video. Okay, no problem. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I did want to play a video that we, um, yeah, I'll find it by the end of the video, but I, I, I did want to talk more about, about everything that, um, you know, that you're doing and, and about your story and what brought you here and, well, and the changes you're trying to make. The journey has been rough, um, but as I was beginning to say, I worked in a crime laboratory for 10 years. So I have a very analytical and methodic approach to how I solve problems. So I started looking at this whole family court system, which wasn't working because we were all trained and taught and conditioned to report domestic violence, report sexual assault. But in talking with all the other moms, this pattern of practice was emerging that whenever we reported and asked for help, somehow we were all losing custody of our children. How did this happen? So 
what I have um, concluded after a lot of research and going down all the rabbit holes is that the family core is a criminal cartel of organized crime that is identifying, targeting, and exploiting children for power, profit, and control. It is a multi-billion dollar, if not trillion dollar industry um, for selling children. And the identification part comes when we report the abuse or parents who have sexually assaulted children. As soon as you report that, the pedophiles that are in charge, I'm just going to say it, I'm going to be straight up blunt, they've now identified new merchandise and they want to get a hold of that merchandise. And that's why the children are being sold in these fraudulent courts. And uh, I've worked with many moms. I've been in and out of so many parent groups and the moms are extr extremely traumatized. So I'm sure um, as you find, you know, some people can barely talk. They're dealing with managing their own trauma, but there are so many smart women who've been looking at the laws, who've been going into all the codes. I bought the book, the family code book. I bought the uh, what the attorneys get on how to litigate in California. I started reading through those. And these are actually corporate statutes. They have no criminal penalty. And what happened as I was investigating the Violence Against Women Act Bill Clinton signed this into existence in 1994. And what that did was shuttle all the criminal prosecution of violence. And many moms and I no longer want to put domestic in it because as soon as you say domestic, it shuttles it out of criminal court and put it over into this mysterious family court. Where yeah, we, we were told that. That, that, that that was where these were going to be investigated. Well, no, that's the cartel. This is where they deceptively put you into an administrative court. It's not a criminal court. Uh, if you read the family code for- And, 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 and people, I want to emphasize- that Rhonda is talking about the differences between your rights in criminal court and your rights in family court, which you would think are different because in criminal court, your life is at stake and in family court, it's different, right? And, and Rhonda is saying that when your rights, when your case transfers from criminal court to family court, suddenly all your rights are gone. Except it's really crazy because the stakes are a lot higher. And here's the deception. Because it's not a criminal court, there is no jury. You have a hearing officer who's posing as a judge, and there's an implied consent to mediate your case. So you've gone in there, and you're letting this stranger who's not really applying criminal law and they're not investigating crimes, they're just selling children. So we've all seen the money playbook. You've got the custody evaluator that's costing tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then the next thing was to weaponize these domestic violence restraining orders and then make parents buy back time with their children and call it supervised visitation. And I have parents paying upwards of $5,000 a month to spend time with their own children you know, daring it to be called and, a visitation. And supervised visitation where they're they're charging poor indigent parents who lost their cases to begin with because they couldn't afford good attorneys. And now they can't regain custody of their children because they can't afford supervised visitations. Oh, you're uh, stuck with a fraud. Um, all these family law attorneys are nothing but criminals. The therapist, the psychologist under the AFCC, which is the Association of Family and Conciliatory Courts, these are fraudsters. I am a legitimate forensic scientist. I have knowledge, training, and experience, was trained in a forensic crime laboratory that has ASCLAD lab accreditation. It has to meet the FRI standard for expert witness testimony, which means your error rate has to be acceptable. Uh, you have to have peer review and um, you have to have proficiency testing. None of these alleged- Proficiency testing, that's hysterical. None of these alleged forensic uh, psychologists uh, 
are tested and the error rate in the field of psychology is 60% or greater. So it doesn't even qualify for expert witness testimony. And they're certainly not peer reviewed and generally accepted across the field. And they violate many of federal rule 702, which are the Dauber standards, which add to the Fry standards um, for for example, excluding hearsay testimony. So in my case, uh, opposing counsel hired a $700 an hour fake forensic psychologist to write a fake report about me. And I wrote my own objection and uh, was successful in getting the judge to uphold that because it was such a blatant violation. So a lot of that fraud- But, you know, but I want to point out though, Rhonda, that you are a certified- professional and you were able to get a small amount of justice in this case, you know, where, where you were able to get them to agree with you. But most people that are in family court or CPS are getting screwed. Don't have your credentials. They don't have that. Right. Like, I mean, and you know, and, and having everything being everything, being the amazing, brilliant scientist, forensic scientist you are, you're able to get that one little nudge of justice. But most of us trapped in the system don't have those connections. We don't have that training, right? And 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 even with that, it's so difficult. I mean, you know, and I, I'm just pointing this out that I'm I'm so thrilled and so proud of you for making that and putting it out there. But can you imagine how it's like for people that are not credentialed like you, that are not, you know, that don't have what you had bringing it into it? And so I'm sorry for interrupting you. No worries, but I will remind you, while I've had these small victories, I have not seen my daughter in three years because she is court kidnapped, um, which leads me to the next discussion that I wanted to get to is that we are operating under false authority. We are giving criminals authority of us because we've been duped. And as a society, we need to stop doing that. And my, my favorite question to ask moms these days is, have you read the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence? And oftentimes I'm told no. Well, that's one of the first things I did was I got my little pocket Constitution. I got it right here. I freaking, by the way, guys, I freaking love Rhonda. Can we just, I, I just want to start a team Rhonda team. Like, because <laughs> Well, knowledge is power. I love your message. I love your freaking message. You know, after we spoke earlier, I reread the Bill of Rights. I think I read it in my case when I went a little crazy. Like, I literally went crazy. Like, I read the Bill of Rights, like, when I, like, had my case. And I was like, but, but, but they said this happened. Like, you know, and so, Rhonda, I'm so fuck. I'm so thrilled that you were telling people. It's important because I think we're on the cusp of having the victories if an, if more and more and more of us actually get, you know, this one's put out by westernstatesnewsservice.com. It's a little pocket constitution. And I would like to read um, some of the Declaration of Independence that has given me the strength to stand firm in what our founding fathers gave us. Okay. And this is going to be a sobering reminder that we're living in a deja vu. We are under a tyrannical government that almost feels worse than what they were experiencing. They revolted over a 2% tax, and many of us are paying 90% taxes and having our children kidnapped. So let that permeate. Our children are factually being kidnapped by a tyrannical government, and that's why there's all these guns. <laughs> By these that's claiming, this claiming that's e unlawfully claiming that they have the right to supersede the constitution when they don't. No, and when you're, no. While you're reading the constitution, I, I, I'm sure that you already have it on your list, but I would love to, um, you know, uh, if, if you make sure to review the first, the fourth, and the sixth amendments. Okay, well, I'm going to read the declaration first. So, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent 
of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying the foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable. Look at how many children have been kidnapped. How many people are suffering under this? That's our founding fathers were brilliant. Uh, then to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. People are accustomed to family court. They're being they're accustomed to being told what to do instead of reading the law for themselves and saying, I call bullshit. Wait a minute, I see criminals and I'm calling bullshit. Um, excuse my cussing, but it is it is appropriate. <laughs> it's it's sometimes necessary. I it just is. So, but when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Now, what that means is like what I've been doing. I've been reading about how do I redress my grievances? How do I understand the law of the land that anything that sets itself against the Constitution is null, void, and of no legal force or effect? So when enough of us stand up and use these words, we do not consent to this tyrannical government. We do not consent to this fraud. We do not consent to this criminal cabal of organized crime posing as a family court that is factually a corporation with a Duns and Bradstreet number uh, doing alternative dispute resolution mediation under fraud and then saying they can kidnap my children and then tell some police officer, aka policy officer, who doesn't have a degree in constitutional law, yet calls themselves law enforcement, what law are they enforcing? Oh, corporate policies? Yeah. That set themselves up against the Constitution? Uh, yeah, you've just committed a trespass. So, no, we don't acknowledge your authority because you don't actually have it. Whoever it is that's donating to their police benevolent fund or whoever it is, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I don't, I mean, you know, and I, I want to say when, when I had my case opened, the pivotal moment for me was one day I picked up a a law book. And and I was I was a nursing student at the time. So I I, I read through a lot of policy and procedures. And um I read straight through the CEP judge benchmark book. And I couldn't stop reading because I was just like, oh, my God. None of this is happening in my case. My attorney told me that everything that was happening was lawful and it's not. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like one or two or it was literally everything that was happening was unlawful. And I just felt my heart drop. Like my heart dropped like i was just like oh my god something's wrong with the system because there's no way that anyone is this bad of an attorney that literally everything he has told me is lawful has been unlawful how would he have passed the bar and so then i was i started contacting people in my case and i was like oh my god my attorney is in, involved in this criminal <laughs> conspiracy and they all told me i was crazy but I was like, how is it possible that anyone is this dumb? <laughs> like, really? And how is it possible that everyone on my case is, I mean, they weren't minor issues of law. It was everything happening in my case was unlawful. And everyone telling me it was okay, like things that you know aren't okay. Like, you know, like my kid was never, my child was never danger and he was new for me. I mean, there's a lot, 
anyone has been through a case, I know that you can think about it and be like, oh my God, there were things that don't make sense. So, you know, I picked up a book and I started reading all these laws and everything was wrong. So now, 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 Rhonda, you were saying that we should all start reading the laws. And I, th I think I, I, I'm 100% on your side on that. Do so you want to talk about some other laws that we should all be reading? Well, I mean, the supreme law of the land is fundamental. And I believe it's the most important to really sink in and understand that. The uh, Bill of Rights was written in plain, simple English. I mean, we have the right to a jury trial. That's not happening in family court because it's not a real court. Uh, we have, um, you know, the right to bear arms. And why do we have the right to bear arms? It's to protect our children from being kidnapped by the government. That's yeah. where we're at right now. And we can all learn from what's happening over in North Carolina, where there were reports that FEMA was prohibiting people from getting help. And so they started their own militias. And guess what? That's in the Constitution. What is a well-trained militia? That's we the people, each and every one of us. You don't have to have a gun. You could have a blowtorch. You could have your little pitchfork. You could have whatever arm you think you need to defend yourself. And that's what's happening over in uh, North Carolina right now. And the sheriff and the, and the state police have told FEMA to stand down according to these reports we're seeing. So I see that there are people uh, going through extraordinary circumstances that are going back to self-policing communities, working you know, to solve the problem themselves. And we're in this um, we are the beta tested population of the tyrannical government. It's been five years of fine tuning this criminal syndicate's playbook on how to steal children from families and traffic them for yeah. sex trafficking. Horrible. And, and, and while I want to talk about this tyrannical government and why I think it's happening, it is, I, I think it's happening because people are so distracted with their own lives that people do not vote in local, state, or even presidential elections. And, and I think that people aren't really thinking about what's going on and what the implications of it is. And I wanna tell everyone that in addition to voting in elections, it's not enough that we vote in our elections. We need to tell our election officials what they need to do in order to get our vote. And, and no one's doing that. You know, Additionally, I mean, we, the people, were supposed to govern our own government, a limited government, and we were all supposed to take a turn doing civil duties. So we're supposed to fill these seats. And right now, George Soros, a big criminal, he has funded all these corrupt district attorneys, corrupt politicians, corrupt uh, sheriffs and city councils who are employing these corrupt police officers. So we need to uh, have these people removed either by resigning, um, voting them out, recalling them, replacing them. And we, the people, the good people, need to step to the plate and take these positions and participate. I have spent so many hours over the last uh, several years attending board of supervisor meetings and making public comment. That's what's on my videos on my YouTube channel attending the city council meetings, I started digging around and learning that there were all these different uh, required domestic violence commissions, and that comes out of VAWA. And it's a, it's a monster bureaucracy that was set in place to fund the criminal cartel. It really was. And I started attending those meetings, and that's where I started seeing the lip service of these domestic violence agencies. Our money to the tune of millions upon millions of dollars is being used to fund illegal immigrants. So I uh, got my domestic violence counselor training that's required by California. I got it online through an organization called Casa de la Familia run by an Anna Nogales. This had so much propaganda in it. Didn't didn't really address the major class of parents who are having their children kidnapped. And one section of it, of this whole massive thing was mostly towards illegal immigrants saying that they could get a fast tracked uh, 
entry into the country for their entire family if they claim domestic violence. And then as I've been going to domestic violence meetings, I'm seeing this playbook where they've got these immigrants who are getting all the services. They get the attorney paid for, they get housing, they get vouchers, they get all this money. And moms like me who actually live here get nothing. It's all part of the scam and the fraud. And one just need to look at the cost of these family law attorneys that are now upwards of $700 an hour. That should never happen. If seven hundred dollars an hour for people that are doing shit for you, they do nothing. And same with these fraudulent uh, psychologists. When I worked in a crime lab, um, we got a fixed salary so that across the board, with you know your normal promotional uh, tiers, to give the uh, sense of objectivity that we couldn't be bought out or bribed. Anytime you're throwing huge dollar uh, dollars around you're paying for an outcome that's not justice yeah it's not justice, not justice at not all justice at all when everything is paid so at worst you know i mean at best the family court is a in my opinion at best the family court is a uh it's a corporation where everyone has a has 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 a financial incentive. But you know, at worst, it's actually a criminal cartel funded by the cartel. And you know, and I, and I say this with actual relevance. So, you know, in um the the Pennsylvania cash for kids judge that was charged criminally for se literally selling kids to a for-profit juvenile depend juvenile delinquency um facility. He was getting kickbacks. That you know, that tip came from the criminal underworld. That judge was getting kickbacks from the criminal underworld, from organized crime. So if the judge in Pennsylvania with juvenile delinquency was getting kickbacks from the criminal underworld, do we have to wonder why? I ask you, why do we have to wonder that children are being removed from good mothers and placed with child abusers and child molesters? Why children are being removed over domestic violence from their victim mothers and placed with the perpetrators? Why? Right, and you're referring to the Darvo playbook, defend, attack, reverse, victim, offender. The mother does what she was told, the child does what they were told and they report abuse. And then the mother gets accused of parental alienation uh, a debunked theory that, and I bought several law books too. I read the Judicial Guide to Child Safety in Child Custody Cases. I even entered it into the court record where it specifically said PAS, Parental Alienation Syndrome, is debunked and must never be used. And yet, opposing counsel use it, the judge is using it. Just like Family Code 3026 also says, you cannot put a kid into reunification therapy. In my case, opposing counsel, and the judge put my kid into reunification therapy. So they don't even follow their own rules and codes. It is just as Rebecca Bailey says, the Wild West. So why are we the people putting up with this? When are enough of us gonna stand together and say, no, this is a criminal cartel, we reject it. We are going to require all our local politicians to reject this family court. We're not putting up with this fraud anymore. This is child kidnapping. And parents do, in my opinion, need to form militias under the law, under the constitutional protections that we have. Read your book. And don't let anyone kidnap your children. This will stop when parents are armed and say, you stay the fuck away from our children. Yes, yeah, stay the fuck away from our children. Read the Constitution. Read and 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 originally the Second Amendment was designed not so that people can have guns and kill people. It was because that one day the government may go too far. It's for self-defense, it's as simple as that. And what do we have? We had bad have bad actors staging false flags where they go shoot up a school on purpose, murder children. They've already got their legislation written that they want to pull the heartstrings of 
duped people go, oh my God, you're right. That's terrible. Guns are bad. No, they hired somebody to do it. These yeah. are hired killers to push gun grab laws because we would be sitting ducks without our without our um, guns. Yeah, and guns. These bad guys know that the American public is armed. That's why they tried to enact it. California is the worst. They tried to, um, they want to know, register your guns so they know who to watch out for. They want to know how much ammunition these people are buying so they kind of can gauge who they're going to go after, who they have to watch out. It's supposed to be, um, nowhere in our constitution did it say we had to register anything and that they had to, you know, we had to tell people about our ammunition. And our founding fathers did that for a reason. They were facing tyranny and they wanted to lay a foundation for us to protect ourselves. And we've done a really bad job of it. Yeah. And so look at where we're at. And unfortunately, yes. Michelle, things and we, are have to, we have to wonder where this policy reform comes from. Where I mean, there is so much policy that is front and center with what I consider to be special interest groups. You know, who wants to take our guns away except people that want us to be vulnerable? Who wants to take our rights away except people that want to violate our rights? Who wants criminals to not be charged with crimes except criminals? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we really have to think about it. And who is pushing it? People that are paid to push it. People that have, I mean, they're all special interest groups. So, um, you know, and I, I quickly wanted to, um, you know, you know, Rhonda, when you mentioned the um, the Bill of Rights, it just brought back all this stuff when I was reading the laws. Um, I think I'm, I have, I, 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 I first before I'm going to read what um, what came up with me when you mentioned that, I, I want to clarify it with um, any of our listeners and our watchers that. Um, that I, that I probably, I, I may be autistic. I suffer from probably black and white thinking, but I know that when I had my case open, I suddenly opened the laws and I read them and like my case, my like whole world shattered because people kept telling me that this is right. And I was like, but that's not what it says in the law. And, and constitutional law is supposed to su supersede local state and even federal statutes. And these were the first, these these in these three statutes in the ten statutes that you mentioned. I just remembered. I read them over and over and over again when my case was open, and, and they were what galvanized me to start a social justice movement. And I want to first read um, the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble or to petition the government for redress of grievances and you know we are silenced in cps cases we are silenced in family court cases yeah they put gag orders on us unconstitutional gag orders that should be ignored but what's happening they get their cabal after you to scare you and intimidate you and threaten to throw you in jail or hold you in contempt of court if you dare talk about your case. It's ridiculous. And they're, um, in issuing these gag orders, they're depriving parents of the right to familial free speech with their own children, which is a First and Fourteenth Amendment violation. Yeah, First and Fourteenth. So we're, we're going to go into the Fourteenth, but the First... Exactly. So there's, there's these gag orders and additions to the gag orders. CPS court is confidential. And I read this today and, and I was like, well, we're going to get to the Sixth Amendment too after that. And, and you know, and the confidentiality of the CPS court is just completely in, unconstitutional. But we're going to move on to the Fourth Amendment, okay? And and I, I really want people that have ever been to the system to read this book. I read it. When I had a case and I was like, wait, but this is the, this is the constitution, the bill of rights. This supersedes all laws. It is this our is supreme law. law of the land. This is their basic law of the land. Yeah. Okay. So the fourth amendment, the right of the people to secure their persons, houses, 
papers and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affiliation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons to be seized. Rhonda, can you talk about this in family court and CPS? Oh my goodness. Probable cause doesn't exist. Oath or affirmation. Oh, do you have to tell the truth? I mean, we have the right not to be lied about and parents are being lied about and their children are being seized, unlawfully seized. So yeah, we have the right to be secure in our persons and we're not secure um, from this criminal cartel calling itself the family court. Right. And against unreasonable searches and seizures. And the problem here is that the, uh, you know, the, the federal government or, you know, I guess ASPA has all, I mean, there are literally loopholes for agencies and written into all of like rule of courts. There is too much discretion. So basically judges and agencies have loopholes. Oh, but well, guess what? We just passed this year is the Chevron deference uh, doctrine, which <laughs> now wipes everything out. So yeah. all these agencies are going to go under because they've lost that loophole because the Chevron deference doc, uh, doctrine. You no, know, I, have, I have an issue with the Chevron doctrine, though. And what? my issue with the Chevron doctrine is that the separation of powers do not exist. Right. So we all think so this country is based on the, like the idea, the fundamental idea of the separation of power is that the executive branch and the judicial branch and um, the sorry, I'm forgetting the last branch, the administrative but, judicial. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that they all check each other. Right. Except I want to say that the executive branch. Oh, wait, wait. The executive branch and the judicial branch are all the same branch. So CPS is corrupt. And the courts are corrupt and they're in cahoots with each other, right? So now we have that all going on. And, and now judges are the final arbiters of everything. Um, so the Chevron Detron, basically, this Chevron deference abolishment basically makes judges the final arbiters and everything. Like, what do you think of that? No, it doesn't. No, what this Chevron deference does away with is all these agencies purporting to be experts at anything. Example, the EPA, which is what this lawsuit uh, came about from, was issuing its own orders, its own laws. And then they were finding this fisherman, something like they were saying, oh, we're going to be able to bring someone on your boat and you're going to have to pay $17,000 to have this man watch you do your fishing. This, So that's what this case is doing away with, that these agencies aren't experts. They can't make up their own laws. Family court is purport, purporting to be the expert in families and they have their own laws. So the Chevron deference actually does away with all that fraud. So, you know, I, 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 and I understand in this case where, where the agency, there's an agency overreach, right? But I am still very uncomfortable with the idea that judges are the final arbit arbiters in issues. No, uh, the judge, and the, here, this is, this is, again, you're getting confused because did you consent to let a judge arbitrate your children away from you? If you did, well, then you've given him the power. But if you didn't, your child should not be removed from you unless you've committed a heinous crime and you're in a criminal court with a jury trial. Read okay. the Constitution again. You have the right to a jury trial. You can't be deprived of anything. Jury trial. That's what, again, the family court is a corporation. It's dealing in uh, ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution. When I was being dragged into court every two weeks after my daughter was kidnapped to put me in trauma and to run me through the mill. I mean, they really wanted me dead. My ex paid these people to homicide me. That's what he paid for. This criminal cartel deals in the murder of women and children. So I was exhausted and I was very lucky that I met people who had been studying the law and went with me to court and were 
um, mock trialing me and pretending to ask me questions and how are you going to answer this? Oh my God. He's like, well, you can't say this. And I went into that courtroom and I just remember saying, I do not consent. I don't want to be here anymore. And I did the King Solomon thing. You know, he wants to cut the baby in half. He can have her. I just want out of this. He's going to kill both of us basically. And when I said the words, I do not consent, you could have heard the record scratch. The judge just stopped because I withdrew my consent and he knows he's dealing in contract law. And without my consent to continue, it ends everything. Yeah. But it ends everything. It, but, I, you know, I, I mean, but the two they actually listen, and that's where the jury trials come in because the jury trials, the idea where you have a jury of your peers in a perfect world. Um, and, and I do want to say that um, in San Francisco, they recently passed a law where a jury, people sitting in a jury get paid for their time. And I think that is a brilliant, uh, Mayor Lennon Breed passed that law. You know, because I won't lie, I, I get the jury trial summons and I don't go. A lot of people don't go. And, and, and you know, I think it is, it's, I think I want to urge lawmakers all across the, the United States to pass similar laws where we are compensating people for their jury trial participation because a lot of good people don't want to participate in juries because we have we have lives we have work. Well, again, and Michelle, I would I would um, urge you to consider that that's exactly how we got here. Is people aren't willing to spend the time to participate in civics. And yes, I've been on jury trial. I got a small little stipend, but we don't need more laws. My opinion is we have too many laws. Um, we as a society, as we the people, as Americans, are going to go through a lot of pain and suffering coming up so that we learn the lesson of how important it is to participate. And someday what I truly hope and believe is we're going to be in a position where we're not having all our money stolen from us via all these taxes we pay so that we can actually spend more time with our family and spend more time doing our civil service, whatever that be, be mayor for a year, do your, yeah, do your jury duty because we want smart people on the juries. We don't want people who didn't know how to get out of jury duty. It horrifies me when smart people don't show up for jury trial because they should put themselves in, in those shoes. What if you were, the defendant, would you want a bunch of uneducated people who, you know, possibly could get bribed off or who just can't make reasonable sense about the evidence that's being presented? I don't. So, yeah. and unfortunately, it's happening because people have other things going on. Because we're being broke, we we are conditioned, and we've been we've been put in a slave position. I mean, my taxes, if you know, it's forty percent off my income tax off the top. I go to the gas pump, I'm paying 30% taxes on the gas. I go to the grocery store, I'm paying 9.5% using money that already got taxed to buy groceries. Um, the cell phone has taxes, the utilities have taxes. We're way above a 2% T tax that caused the original revolution. They're, they're, they're bleeding us dry, they really are. The they being the criminal cartel the tyrannical government that then has all these other little wings. Um, and my, my, I feel that my calling from God is I worked in a, in a crime laboratory. I'm going after law enforcement. I believe the, the, where we need to get to is we have people who have a four year degree in constitutional law that are then the police officers or our sheriffs, they need to be educated in the real constitution. Right now we have a brotherhood of Freemasons that are actually part of the cartel. And that's a big problem. Not, and I'm not saying every cop is bad, but in my experience, you know, it was eight bad cops who kidnapped my daughter with a cover up with the city council, covering it up with a fraudulent police audit. That's how um, extensive this criminal cartel is it's and that's pretty frightening and, it, and it's time for us to take our country back it's time for us to resign these people replace them uh how would uh cops yeah. certified under sb2 uh one of the sheriff's deputies explained 
that to me. But where are the people to be pressing on all of this? Which is why I started targeting the San Mateo County Domestic Violence Council, because I found out in the Violence Against Women Act of this multi-layer, enormous bureaucracy that every county had to have these domestic violence councils. I'd never heard of it. And so I started showing up and guess what? They're trying to silence victims. They're trying to just work on the cartel, but not really help victims. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Well, I'm showing up here and I'm going to deal with you people. And I'm either going to get you to resign or quit. We're going to replace you or, you know, where's the justice? I'm just taking all the evidence for the future trials that they will be going through. Because I believe that everyone who has participated in, in kidnapping these children, harming them and torturing them should be hung in the public square. Absolutely. I I have so much love for your message, Ron. I really do. I think that you are a fierce advocate for women and children. Um, I, I think I, I want to close out this, uh, this this live stream. Do you have any final words to say to anyone that may be watching? Uh, be brave. Um, be brave. Speak up. Speak truth. I've had other women tell me that they have their children because they saw what happened to me and I had been posting it and giving information to them. And so they were able to successfully uh, stand up against the family court tyranny to keep their children. And these women have told me they're sorry for my sacrifice, but it's not in vain. Um, I, you know, to quote Sarah Connor from Terminator, I didn't want this honor. I didn't ask for this honor and I don't want it, but I'm stuck in it and I'm going to see it through to the end. And let's all get together and let's put this criminal cartel down using the law that our founding fathers gave us. That's right, guys. And and by the way, uh, go to the, uh, the the description of this video, and we have a uh, we have information on a rally we have coming up on October fifteenth. And I also want to I want to encourage everyone to call your public officials and demand that they put this issue on the ballot. Call Kamala Harris and tell her if she wants our vote. That she needs to stand up for family rights. Call Gavin Newsom and tell him that family rights needs to be in the ballot. Call your California legislative representative and tell them if they want your vote, that they will make this issue an issue. Okay, everyone, um, please like and share this video. Over and out.